Climbing down to the caves, I slipped and fell and have injured my leg. I think the femur is broken. It is clearly infected. The skin has turned a bright, tight pink, and the pain is crashing in on waves, winter tides against my shoreline, drowning out the ache of my stones. I struggle back to the bothy to rest, but it has become clear that there is only one way this is likely to end. The medical supplies I looted from the trawler have suddenly found their purpose. They will keep me lucid for my final descent. From here, this last time, I have understood there is no turning back. The torch is failing along with my resolve. I can hear the singing of the sea creatures from the passages above me, and they are promising the return of the gulls. They'd stop the traffic back as far as the Sanford Junction and come up the hard shoulder like radio signals from another star. It took 21 minutes for them to arrive. I watched Paul Tyner to the second on his watch. What charnel house lies at the foot of this abyss? How many dead shepherds could fill this hole?
If the caves are my guts, this must be the place where the stones are first formed. The bacteria phosphoresce and rise, singing through the tunnels. Everything here is bound by the rise and fall, like a tide. Perhaps the whole island is actually underwater. When I was coming round from the operation, I remember the light they shone in my eyes to check for pupil contraction. It was like staring up at a moonlit sky from the bottom of a well. People moved at the summit, but I could not tell if you were one of them. <laughs> <laughs> 